So in many programming languages, characters of strings are actually called characters or shars for short. For example, if you iterate over a string hello world, you retrieve each individual character per iteration. But in Golang, these characters are not called characters or chars, they are actually called runes. That's why in this video we are going to clarify what these runes actually are and what the fundamental difference between characters and runes is. So let's go. So first, rune is a really special data type in Golang and it is just an alias for int32. And basically everything that is an int32 can be automatically also a rune. So that basically means that the rune is equivalent to all int 32s in any way or in all ways. And these aliases or runes are actually there to kind of be distinguishable from the int 32s, right? Kind of makes sense. But in the end, they are just type aliases. And these runes are designed to represent Unicode code points. Now I'm going to show you what that actually means in a minute here. But let's just quickly first define a rune. Let's just say var r and then rune. This way we declare a rune and then we just insert a Unicode code point or some sort of character or rune into these single quotes here, right? And if we just look at the definition of a rune, we see here that rune is just a type alias, right? It is just in the end an int 32. Okay, let's quickly clarify here why and when would you ever use runes in Golang. Well, runes are especially important when you deal with non-English text, right? Or really special characters like emojis or the Chinese language, Mandarin for instance. And runes really come into play and are essential for displaying these kind of really special symbols. And also these runes can be used to really handle text in a really efficient and optimized way in Golang. So in the end, they are optimized for Unicode character encoding. So that basically means that we can represent any sort of character inside of a rune. Right, that is kind of representable with these Unicode code points. So let's just have a really quick example here. Let's just create a string, which we call S for instance, right? We can do it this way, but we can also do it the short way. And then we just define some really special characters, like these two characters that are often representative in the German language, for instance. But we can also just add an emoji here. Just add the rocket here, for instance, right? So these three characters are really special and we want to kind of handle them or kind of process them in any way. How can we actually achieve this? Well, we can use runes, right? So first, how can we define or kind of transform this string into a slice of runes? It's quite simple. We can just say R and then initialize it with the slice rune and then we just use S here as a value. Right? And now R basically contains all the characters, all the runes or Unicode code points that S has, right? I hope that makes sense. So now let's quickly print line maybe the original string and then the rune here. And if we run this code now, we do get the original string and then we actually get the Unicode code points of these characters, right? And obviously it should be quite clear that also the spaces are characters. Right, so for instance, the character between the weird looking A and the rocket symbol is a space and therefore it is represented as a 32. And as you can see, the rocket has a huge Unicode code point in this case. What we can also do, besides just printing it, we can also iterate over the individual characters of a string by just saying this here, right, range S, and then R is automatically a rune. If we just remove the slice, obviously, R is just a rune, right? So the individual character or Unicode code point of the string. So let's just print this here. Right? And if we just run this program again, we should actually see the index and then the individual rune 
right, which is quite cool. And it obviously also prints the rocket symbol, which is really neat. And we can do a lot of stuff with these runes. And you automatically also do a lot of stuff when you kind of do a lot of text processing or iterate over strings automatically. So let's just quickly clarify here what the actual difference between characters and runes is in Golang. And there is obviously a fundamental difference. Now, characters in general are just symbols, right? And runes are really Unicode code points, which are really similar to simple characters or symbols, but they have a specific focus on Unicode encoding. Now, when would you use runes? In Golang, for instance, a really common use case would be text processing or everything where you have to deal with text, right? So for instance, text analysis could be a use case where you kind of analyze each individual character individually. Now, and when it comes to text analysis, especially for like internationalization, right? Where you have to handle a lot of different languages, where you also have a lot of different symbols. For instance, if you use the Asian languages, then really handling these unique runes is especially important. So let's quickly look at a real world use case here. So let's get just rid of this example program. And then we can just start with a really simple text analyzer here. So let's just make a struct for that. Right? Let's just say type text analyzer and then struct. And then for instance, let's just say that we want to measure the word count. We maybe also want to measure the line count and the character count, right? Or the rune count, but maybe also like the uppercase letters, right? We also want to kind of count the uppercase letters, but also maybe the lowercase letters. So we just call this upper and lower count. And these are the things or the statistics we want to analyze, right? Or kind of retrieve from a simple text that could be written in any language. All right, so let's quickly create our new text analyzer function here. And in the end, this should return a pointer to text analyzer. And then we just return a new text analyzer struct, which for now is just empty, right? And in the end, these kind of five struct fields are also kind of zero or empty in this case. All right, let's just create, I think, the most basic function, which is just a print function, right? So we say TA and then text analyzer, and then we say print stats, for instance. Now I'm not going to really focus on the visibility here of this kind of struct, right? Because obviously it's not important for me right now because this struct and these functions will only live in our main file, right? So I'm not going to focus on the visibility here. And in the print stats function, we are just printing the statistics. So basically every single field, every single struct field we've defined here. So let's quickly do this here, right? So what we do are kind of five printfs and here we just print the individual struct fields, like I said before, right? Nothing really special going on here. And then let's just use this text analyzer in our main function. Now, what I have here is a really simplified text that we want to analyze, right? So we have emojis, special characters, new lines, and all sorts of characters. Now let's just say A, and then we initialize a new text analyzer. And then we say a print stats. And before that, we say a dot analyze. And in here, we pass in text, right? Now, obviously, we have to create this function. So let's quickly do this. And this is obviously the core of our analyzer. So here, we obviously say the pointer to text analyzer because we want in the end to manipulate the struct fields, right? Because if we do not do this, the struct fields can be manipulated, but in the end, they are not manipulated, right? Because we kind of copy here the struct by value and not by reference. So let's just do this and then say analyze. And then this function takes in a text string and doesn't return anything. So let's fill in the line count and character count here because that should be really simple. Now you might assume that we could use the length, right, of the text. But this is not the case. And this is really important to understand here. 
Now, why not using lang, right? The lang function is because strings are UTF-8 encoded. And thus not all characters take up the same number of bytes. So for instance, a character like a takes one byte, whereas a character like emoji, for instance, takes four bytes in UTF-8. And this function len or length just gives us an inaccurate result or inaccurate length when it comes to this Unicode text. Right, and this is really important to understand, especially when you have to deal with multi-byte characters, for instance, like emojis. Now let's just make an example here, right? Let's just create a slice of runes quickly. Right? And then we just iterate over our rune slice. Let's, let's just rename R to runes here. And then we transform R to a string, right? Why we're doing this is just to kind of demonstrate what the actual byte length of a character is, right? And then we say byte count and we initialize it with the value rune length. And then we say, R. And then we will just add a printf statement where we kind of print the rune itself, the UTF-8 version of our string, of our currently iterated rune, right, where we convert it to a string with this line here, and then the byte count for our rune itself. So let's quickly start this program here. And what we can actually see with the first three lines is the UTF-8 representation but then also the bytes or the used bytes, right? So we can actually see that the rune A itself has one byte. The next character, which is a special character, has two bytes and the rocket emoji has four bytes, right? So in the end, it is really important to make use of these built-in Golang rune functions to really support multi-byte characters. Right? Because when we use len or just the length of a string, it does not fully work and we do not really iterate byte wise or multi byte wise over a string. We just kind of iterate per character in this case, not per rune. Right? And this is really important to know when we want to calculate, for instance, the length or the line count or the uppercase letters. Right? So hopefully this was clear. Now let's just say that we first rename A to TA and then we say line count and we initialize this struct field with just a simple subtraction. And what we do is utf8 dot rune count in string and then we say text, right? And rune count in string, just like I said before, it's not the len function, right? It counts the number of runes inside of a string. And it's also like the multi-byte characters. So for instance, the rocket emoji is one rune. And we do the same thing. So rune count in string, but this time we replace the new lines with empty characters. So we say strings dot replace all, and then we use text, and then we use the new line character. And then we want to replace the new line character with just an empty character, right? Or no character. So let's quickly format this here, right? And this is just a simple way of counting the lines in a text, right? Or in a string. We are kind of just counting the runes, right? We are replacing the new lines with an empty character. So in the end, these new lines are not respected with this kind of subtraction here. And then we again count the runes in a string again, right? And then we just subtract the runes without the new lines. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, obviously you can just optimize this, right? Because we kind of duplicate the count computation here. I'm just keeping it really, really simple here. All right, now the character count should be quite straightforward because we already used the rune count in string and now we are making use of it as well here. So rune count in string and then text. Now let's maybe quickly really refactor this. So we just say count or rune count and then we say UTF-8 rune count in string text and then we can refactor this here. So rune count. Now we have to keep this because obviously it's a new string in the end if we replace the new lines with an empty character. And here we say rune count as well, right? And now we initialize the line count and character count. So let's run this to test the functionality. And what we see are two lines and 167 characters or runes. So if you go to the text, 
we actually see that we have two lines, right? So we have here kind of a invisible new line character. So this is calculated, so one, and then here again, right? This is the second line, and then we do not have here a third line. So if we just do this, we have three lines, right? So go run main go, we do have three lines. So you can optimize this, right? But just for the demonstration, I'm just keeping this really simple here. All right, now let's fill in the other three struct fields. So we're going to first iterate over the text. So we're going to say I, R, and then text or range text. Now, I don't think that we need the index itself, right? And now it's important that R is a rune. So in the end, we now kind of can handle with the runes in the text. Right, and now we can make use of the Unicode module and we can say is upper, right? And then is upper takes in a rune and here we say R. So if the rune is an uppercase letter, right? We just want to increase the rune count for our uppercase letters. So we say TA upper count plus plus. And then we can obviously do the same thing with is lower, right? So is lower R. And here we just say lower count plus plus. All right, and now we actually got the functionality for our uppercase and lowercase letters, right? So to kind of initialize a struct field which represents the word count, we can really simplify this kind of version by just saying word count and then we initialize it with the length of strings.fields and then we say text in here. Now this strings.fields function just splits around the white spaces in our text, right? And then it returns a new slice with all the kind of words in our text here, right? And this way we kind of get a really simplified version to retrieve the word count here. Now, and the beautiful thing about Golang is that all the kind of built-in functions like strings.fields kind of support Unicode characters, which is pretty cool. And in the end, they do support runes. So we do not really have to take care of this specific functionality because Golang takes care of this. All right, let's just start our program here and we can actually see the correct computation of all the letters and all the runes inside of our string. Now again, runes are really important in Golang because obviously there are a lot of languages and a lot of Unicode representations developers have to deal with, right? And Golang really simplifies this process a lot here. So runes are pretty important when it comes to Golang, especially when you deal with strings. Now, if you also need a refresher on Golang, I highly recommend watching this video here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day and bye bye.